welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-42. When last we listened in, the party had captured several bandits known as the Green Sash Gang, but the leader was able to escape. The party recovered a wagon and mule team filled with stolen goods. It was decided that the pair of dead bandits would be buried and the rest taken to Colby and turned over to the authorities there. We returned to the campsite the next morning after the group doubled the perimeter guards and a third watched over the bound prisoners. Sister Elaine awoke and bolted out of the trail tent to find everything okay outside. Looking at her companions, she noticed fatigue in their eyes as they had been on guard duty for several hours. Any problems? she inquired, but received nods to the negative from Karina, Cabe, and Lady Irena. The light was peeking up over the rock formation, and the cleric returned to the tent. In the darkness of last night, the group noticed the coloring made spotting the tent difficult, and hence the bandits did not immediately notice it. Vargas Bolger also exited the tent after hearing the cleric exit. The bandits were woken up and complained loudly that their bonds were uncomfortable. The griping fell on deaf ears, and the rest of the rations were handed out with everyone getting an equal share. The gnome complained loudly at the division of food, pointing out that the bandits should go hungry. The point of them slowing down the progress to Colby was introduced and accepted, albeit with gruffness from the sailor. The party packed up the camp and found that the trail tent could be continuously folded over to make it so that a single person could carry the item in a backpack. It was then loaded into the wagon, and the prisoners were formed up in a line behind said wagon. Karina, Cabe, and Lady Irena jumped onto the wagon as they needed the rest, with Bolger and Fargus walking along the side of the prisoners, and Fargus bringing up the back side. The trip was mostly uneventful, with one of the prisoners confirming that they were only an hour or two outside of the frontier town. One prisoner attempted to barter his way out of being taken to town, but he was quickly silenced as flames began to jump from an exhausted Lady Irena in the back of the wagon. Peepers had grown overnight and seemed more steady on his feet. The creature jumped off the wagon and moved out along the trail looking for additional sustenance as Karina kept a close eye on it. An hour into their journey, Cabe called out that riders were approaching. The mage motioned for Fargus to move forward and that she and Karina would watch over the bandits. A loud whistle from the waif caused Peepers to run back to her, which garnered a crooked smile from the mage. That thing must be pretty smart to pick up on that trick, Karina smiled, and said the baby Axby jumped up onto the back of the wagon and was concealed by the waif. Eight riders armed with spears and sheathed weapons approached. Dirt on their mounts and faces indicated that they had been on the trail for a while. Cabe, Sister Elaine, and Fargus approached the men with one hand raised. The militia surrounded the group with the leader addressing the trio. He requested to know their business in a gruff tone, which softened as one of the men yelled back to him, Sir, they've got prisoners. Green sashes from the looks of them. The leader asked if this was correct, and the trio nodded. Cabe spoke, indicating that they had stumbled upon the bandits, and a fight had ensued. He explained the issue and pointed out that their leader, named Cornwall, had escaped and two of the bandits perished in the fight. The leader seemed satisfied and asked about the wagon. Sister Elaine explained that it had belonged to the thieves and was filled with probably stolen goods that they hoped to return to the rightful owners once they got to Colby. Again the leader seemed satisfied with the response and asked them where they were coming from. Fargus started to speak, getting the f out for Phoenix, but was cut off by the cleric. Bremen. We're coming from friends in Bremen. We are looking to resupply in Colby and continue into the frontier from there. The commander looked at the two, but dismissed Fargus's partial response. Friends, huh? Well, <clears throat> you'll find more friends in Colby with the catching of this motley crew. 
Do you need any help, or shall we ride ahead and let the town know? The three Delvers looked at each other, then back to their compatriots. Cade pointed out that they could handle the final leg of the journey, and asked if they had seen Cornwall, but received a negative nod. The militia pointed out that they had not seen anyone on the road all morning for their patrol. The leader congratulated the group and told them that they would ride ahead and have the jail ready for some new additions. The men spurred their horses around and off into the distance. The Delvers continued to march their prisoners along, coming to a small cliff overlooking a valley. Several plumes of smoke rose up from the community. Fargus called for the others to come forward and the group gazed down into the vale. The adventurers looked down to see a sprawling community cut out of the woods. A long road cut through town with a large plaza near the bustling center. Bolger gave a low whistle and pointed out that that was a big city. The others looked at him skeptically with Lady Irena pointing out that it wasn't even a quarter of the size of Phoenix. The sailor then pointed out that he had never been into Phoenix and the crew was only allowed in dockside. The noise of running was heard and the group whirled around to see the last bandit in line had gotten out of his bonds and it were attempting to flee as the group was distracted. Cabe and Fargus began to run after the fleeing man but halted immediately as Karina yelled, STOP! Turning around they saw the waif put fingers in her mouth and give a loud whistle causing Peepers to poke his head up from the concealment. The Axebeak saw Karina point and jumped from the wagon giving chase to the bumbling bandit. Fargus and Cabe froze solid hoping they would not be mistaken as prey as the creature zipped past them. The bandit observed the chase and began to yell in fear but stumbled on a rock and fell to the ground. Peepers quickly caught up to the man and jumped on his chest. Fargus and Cabe also caught up and stood off to the side. The ranger waved to the group and Karina gave another whistle, causing the animal to leave its capture and return to the waif. Interesting, replied the large ranger as he and the bard hoisted the bandit back to his feet. Well, she was training that damn thing all night. Seems to be rather intelligent, replied Cabe. Fargus smacked the bandit hard in the chest as they led him back to the group and pointed out that the bird was certainly smarter than the bandit. The men laughed and re-secured the bandit to the rest of the group. Lady Irena found the trail down and the wagon lurched forward again, leading down into the valley to the town of Colby. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.